Well, I'd like to welcome all of you here today. And just to let you know, I am recording this session so that we can put it <clears throat> on our website. So when um, someone who couldn't make it today, they will see it there. So I'd like to thank you all for joining us today and to learn about the spring 2022 Ollie at Iowa State classes. I have just a few housekeeping things for you to remember. Uh, please keep your microphones muted while the instructors are speaking. There will be time to ask questions after they're all done. The instructors are going to go in the same numerical order as they appear in the catalog. Each instructor will start with their name and then the number and title of their class along with the dates and times. And I want you to please note the following items that have come up since the catalog has been put out. Class number five, sharing your story, writing your own obituary. The class limit has been reduced to 12 and that was our error. Um, we missed that and we apologize, Mary Lou, but just so you all know, it's only 12 people because that class really requires a lot of reading and 12 is, is the max that she can handle for that. Class number 27, which is get your ducks in a line and reduce the burden on your family. Um, she had planned to do two classes, one in person and one online, um, but we, she's decided that she wants to do just one class this session. So she will only do the online version for spring and the in-person one will probably be done at a later time. And then class number 44, um, to read or not to read, or excuse me, class eight, to read or not to read, should have been listed in the catalog for Wednesdays, April 20th through May the 11th, at the same time from 11 to 12.30. So those are some of the major changes there. So this spring, we're gonna have some in-person classes and they will be marked as in-person. There will also be some online with Zoom classes. And the final way some of the classes will be offered is called a hybrid. And our definition of a hybrid is that the presenter will be in the building with some participants and others will be online at the same time. These classes will be marked as hybrid in person and hybrid online. And you will find that at the end of the title of each of those classes. Make sure that you pick the method of delivery that works the best for you for the entire class session. Because we are having to limit the number of people currently in the ballroom, if you pick ballroom, you need to stay with ballroom. If, well, I guess not. If you want to go online for that one, you probably can. But if you pick online, you need to stay online because there will not be a seat for you in the building. Um, then the other thing is tomorrow, registration opens online. 8.30 a.m. Central Time. Um, Heather, who's the program assistant, some of you have been chatting with her a little bit here a little bit ago. Um, we will be available to provide any assistance you need. And we just found out, oh, shortly before lunch, that um, the Alumni Association's website is running slow today and may still be slow tomorrow. So if you try to get on there, and it takes a lot of time to load. And if it takes too long, it'll come up and say an error. It's not you. And I apologize for this, um, but try again uh, and we'll get you in there. So what I'd like to do, and so that's all of my quick housekeeping. So next, I wanna introduce Linda Lubber from Green Hills Retirement Community. And we appreciate Green Hills belief in lifelong learning and their continued support of the OLLI program. So Linda, would you like to say a few words? Yes, thank you very much. And we're happy to be sponsors and really, really promote lifelong learning. So Ollie is just up our alley and wanted to, um, for those of you who may not be familiar with Green Hills, we're a 55 plus community of townhomes and apartments in a full spectrum of services offering equity ownership with uh, more uh, amenities. And we know you have choices for your future. So some of the unique things about Green Hills are we do have, we were talking about IT, we do have a full-time IT services technician, two creative chefs, culinary trained, a full-time wellness coordinator, we're pet friendly. Uh, we offer four team members for our community life enrichment and also door-to-door -door transportation from appointments to fine arts and cyclone sports. So there's no shortage of fun with friends and neighbors. And I would like to invite all of you to bring a friend and join Green Hills for the Iowa State University women's basketball versus Texas Tech. So nothing hotter than ISU women's basketball right now. 
And it would be to come to Green Hills at 11.30 a.m. on Saturday, February 26th. We're including Johnny's in Hilton Coliseum before the one o'clock game to enjoy munchies and bus transportation at noon to Hilton Coliseum. So if you already have tickets, please join us for the pregame social and experience the wonderful Green Hills door-to-door -door transportation we offer. So uh, please RSVP to Bailey Upton by tomorrow, Friday, February 18th for this event on Saturday, the 26th at 1130. And you may call her at 515-357-5000 or greenhillsrc.com. So thank you and hope you enjoy signing up for classes. Thank you, Linda. So next, I would like to introduce Steve Larson from Clarity Asset Management Incorporated. And Steve, once again, we appreciate your continued support of the LA program. Would you like to say a couple words? Sure. Yeah, thank you. And do you want me to just start in with the class too after that? You sure can. Um, uh, as Gerilyn said, I'm Steve Larson with Clarity Asset Management. Uh, we've sponsored Ollie for several years. And uh, some of you may have a mug that uh, keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. I just don't know how it knows the difference to keep them that way. The uh, uh, Our reason for sponsoring Ollie is uh, the, the values that we have as a firm are to promote lifelong and life-wide learning. And uh, Ollie is a great way to uh, engage with that and to promote it in, in Ames and Central Iowa. Um, as a firm, we're a, we're a fee-only fiduciary, and uh, our goal is to develop lifelong trusted relationships with our clients. The services and, and uh, uh, advice that we give is, uh, you know, there, there are no conflicts of interest. Our desire is just to do whatever helps the client. And uh, that's another thing, another value that engages us with Ali, and that is the, the wide variety of subjects and topics and perspectives uh, invites us to engage in dialogue and interaction and learn things that we haven't learned before, uh, maybe to teach others things that they haven't learned before. And so I really appreciate the, uh, the ability to uh, sponsor such a good organization. I'm going to be teaching the first class. It's called uh, Investing for Impact. Uh, it'll be two sessions, March 21st and March 28th. That's a Monday morning from uh, 9 to 10.30. It's a Zoom meeting. Um, but our approach to helping client and in their investing kind of begins with understanding values. And uh, when we think about, if you think about the value set that you employ when you want to give your money away. Give to a charitable organization, you give it to, uh, whether it's a faith expression, you give it to the community, some social cause, some, some issue. The reason you give is because you believe in that organization, you believe in what they do, you believe in the management of that organization, that they're good stewards of the capital that they get and the good stewards of the, the resources employed in fulfilling their mission, their, their purpose. And as a side benefit, we get a tax write-off for those contributions. When it comes to investing, oftentimes we don't think about those values. We just think about the, the risk and return uh, we think about getting the kind of in, in, uh, investment performance that allows me to enjoy my retirement years. And so what, what we do in our approach to investing is take that value set that, that you would employ in giving your money away, apply it to the value set of how you invest your capital, looking for the kinds of companies that, that match your values. And in, in the news, there's a lot in, in, in uh, political conversations and the news and legislation about environmental issues and climate change and becoming carbon neutral or net zero carbon usage. Um, a lot about social issues and, so, and justice and injustices. Uh, a lot about the way companies are run and the governance. 
And all that's under the umbrella of environment, social, and governance investing, or ESG investing. Uh, that's what we help you do is identify your value set, screen out any companies that wouldn't match that value set, and, and employ your capital in a way that not only does you well financially, but it's doing good. Um, and so that's what these two sessions are about. The first one is on kind of the philosophy and approach, uh, the principles that guide that kind of investing. The second session is on putting those principles into practice. How do we practically make decisions to move in that direction? And how can you work with your current custodian, whether it's TIA or some other firm, uh, how can you work with them to get the kinds of investments that you want that fulfill those values and goals? Thanks. Thank you, Steve. This is Sam Wormley. I'm teaching class number two, Apple Watch, the future of health is on your wrist. This one day Ollie class introduces you to the Apple Watch and covers capabilities, setup, customization, and how the watch is an extension of the capabilities of your iPhone. You can measure your blood oxygen level with a revolutionary new sensor and app and take EKG, or I should say ECG anytime, uh, anywhere. See your fitness metrics at a glance uh, on the enhanced always on retina display. And with the Apple Watch on your wrist, a healthier, more active, more connected life is within reach. Thank you. I'm uh, Joe Myers Walker. I'm number three. Um, I, I'm representing Mary Pepper also because she's uh, she. We, we're co-teaching this. Um, we're offering a course. When I was small, what did I see? Finding your voice and writing and illustrating. Uh, and we're I'm number three. Uh, I'm starting April 18th to May 9th three times. Uh, and it's 9 to 1030. And the class includes a workbook. And the little workbook is just simply our process, how we came about. <laughs> uh, Mary and I got started needing to be creative. As we were isolated, we missed seeing our grandchildren, but maybe we could hug them with our words and our illustrations. Um, I'll be showing how to develop characters from many points of view, uh, starting with uh, animation stick figures, because everybody always tells me they can't draw, and you don't have to draw to be an illustrator, if you believe. Um, it's, it's all in the movement and the eyes and the face and the expressions. It's, it's just that simple. Um, but the big thing is composition. And I think that holds everything together, just like a good painting. Um, this led me to illustrating Mary's book. It's uh, Rufus, uh, um, this is quite a mouthful, Rufus Winnebago Flicktail. And Mary's a fourth grade teacher. So she's just great. She knew exactly what kids would wanna do. Um, I'm also writing and illustrating my uh, little children's book. This is how I started. Um, it's called Carol Joe's uh, Daydreaming Tree. And that'll, some of these things will be in the workbook. Um, uh, and it's about my brothers bullying me and so on. So it was really fun. My brothers are real happy about this. <laughs> Mary will help you get your story down on paper and then into book form. Um, and if you don't take yourself real seriously, you could have a really good time. <laughs> well, I'm Jane Cox, and the number of this course is 04, and the class title is From I Get a Kick Out of You to an American in Paris. And it is held on March 21st and March 28th at 11 o'clock. So you can take this class and then eat your lunch. So. I get no kick from champagne. Mere alcohol doesn't thrill me at all. So tell me why should it be true that I get a kick 
out of you. Right. So that is a song, of course, by Cole Porter from Anything Goes, and it's out of the Great American Songbook of what are considered the classics of American music. And Cole Porter was born in Indiana, the son, or the grandson, rather, of what was called the person was called the wealthiest man in Indiana. He went to Yale, he attended Yale. His grandfather, of course, had hoped he would be a lawyer, but he turned out to be a songwriter and composed many, many, many great classics of music that people sing still today. Um, the other night I was watching Lady Gaga and Tony Bennett and they were singing, I Get a Kick Out of You. So we'll look at the music of Cole Porter a little bit about his life. And then the second part will be about George Gershwin, who came from a very different background. He came from a Brooklyn background. He was the grandson of Russian immigrants. He dropped out of school at the age of 15 and went to work on tin, at Tin Pan Alley and also created wonderful, wonderful music. And one of his ideas was try to fuse together jazz and classical music. So we'll talk a little bit about Rhapsody in Blue, classical music, Rhapsody, Blue being jazz, and an American in Paris. So come join the class and listen to some great music and learn a little bit more about the lives of those two fabulous composers. Thank you. I'm Mary Lou Nosco, and I will be teaching class number five, sharing your story, writing your own obituary. This is a four week class that moves through a writing process to complete both our own newspaper and a more detailed online obituary. The point of this class is to write your own obituary, not a spouse's or a loved one's obituary, but your own. And we start by using an obituary template to get down the basics and then we begin to weave in details and stories. Along the way we will be sharing our stories with the other participants and we will be reading some really really unique obituaries. The process is actually a fun one and previous participants have commented on how much they enjoyed it. Why write your own obituary? Well we all have our own reasons. We want to spare our loved ones having to do it, or maybe we are not sure that they have all the information that would be needed. Whatever our reasons, who knows you better than you do? And who could do a better job of writing about you than you would? And let's face it, who doesn't really want to have the last say anyway? So join me as we write our own obituaries and then continue to live our life to its fullest. Beth, are you there? Mute problem. Okay. Beth Larrabee, my course number is course 06. This is Biomes and Ecosystems, What Makes Our Home Planet Earth Tick. Well, we've all had to learn a lot more about our computers in the last two years. Everyone knows now that our computer has an operating system that must function if our computer is supposed to be of any use. Biomes and ecosystems are technical terms that explain how the operating system of our planet works. In other words, we're gonna learn about our planetary life support system. Earth receives energy from the sun, but aside from that, we live in a sealed self-contained unit here on Earth. None of us expect to leave Earth in the foreseeable future unless we have aspirations of being on the first manned Mars mission. We breathe oxygen that was generated by plants two billion years ago. We live on recycled water. That coffee you had for breakfast might have had a little bit of dinosaur pee in it. And the carbon atom from our lunch was once part of a leaf from a 20 million year old ginkgo tree or released from a carbon-bearing rock. 
The components of our ecosystem operating system or our life support system continually remakes itself to provide us a habitable planet. My intent for this course is not to memorize names and numbers, but to gain an understanding of how our collective life support system works. It also allows us to appreciate our, how our human species interacts and affects that life support system. You'll gain the ability to question the myriad of media information that we receive all the time. With what I know about the planet's function, is this information reasonable or reliable? Does this bit of environmental news affect me directly? Will it impact my grandchildren? Why should I be concerned about sea level rise when I live in the middle of the continent? It will also make us think differently about questions such as, how do we feed 7.9 billion people? And that's how many there are on the planet as of today. And by the way, those people are actually generating their own weight in plastic waste every year. And it'll help us to understand why we had 20 US weather events last year that cost us more than a billion dollars each in losses or repairs. So bring your questions and your discussion topics and learn together about our life support system on our pale blue dot in the middle of the cosmos. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alex Pfeiffer, and I am doing course number seven, a time of expansion, life in Ames 100 years ago. Um, by the year 1916, Ames had experienced a decade of growth, econo economic development, and infrastructure improvements. Enrollment at Iowa State had significantly increased, roads were paved, new sewer systems installed, and plans for a new power plant were approved. Ames got its first electric streetcar, hospital and first class hotel. This program shares the story of what it'd be like, the experience of living in Ames and all the changes that Ames residents saw 100 years ago, along with some other fascinating facts that happened in those early years. The course, oh, I forgot to mention the course time, sorry. The course is April 18th um, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. and 2.30 p.m. and it is a one day course. I am also doing course number eight. Notable Women in Ames History on April 25th, uh, 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. We will talk about, um, this presentation allows the audience to meet um, 10 capable women from Ames history over different periods of time. These women helped shape our community through their unique talents, often leading the way for other women to follow. Some of the women that will be included in that are Dr. Jenny Greist, who was Ames' first female physician in, in 1900. Julia Laughlin, uh, a woman station master for the Chicago Northwestern Railroad during the 1920s. Uh, Mary Greeley, who maybe some of you have heard that name before. Cynthia Duff, the, one of the founders of our town. Uh, Ada Hayden, notable botanist from here in, here in Ames. And also Nita Snook, who taught Amelia Earhart how to fly. So come join us for either one of those two programs. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Chuck Ochter and uh, I am teaching class number nine, the 50s. It's a Zoom class. It's offered on Mondays from May 2nd to May 9th from one until 2.30. We could have called this class uh, the box that changed America. That would be uh, TV because of uh, TV's influence from the 50s to the 60s. Uh, do you remember your first uh, TV program that you watched on a regular basis? Was it the uh, uh, Ding Dong School or whatever? Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna see how TV really changed the United States. We're gonna look at uh, Truman's presidency. Uh, he had to deal with all of the GIs that were home now and needed jobs. He had to deal with uh, world conflict. Uh, the Red Square, excuse me, the Red Scare, the Korean War, and the Cold War. In 1952, um, the Republicans took over for the first time in a long time with President Eisenhower. Uh, we're going to look at uh, things that Eisenhower had to deal with, such as um, 
the space race, uh, how family culture changed. Um, we're gonna look at how music changed uh, in, in, during that time. We're gonna look at how TV programs really affected us. Uh, do you remember that quiz, goes, excuse me, quiz show scandal? Uh, we'll look at that, at that also. We'll look at how the family changed during that time because of television. We're also gonna end our time looking at civil rights during that time. We're gonna look at Brown versus Board of Education and what that did for our country. And we're gonna look at the uh, lunch counter sit-ins that started, uh, that was the first nonviolent move in the civil rights era. We'll end up looking actually at a little bit of 1960 because uh, that was the first television debate going on between uh, Kennedy and uh, Nixon. So it should be a fun class, two sessions. I hope you can join us. Thank you. Hello again, um, I'm Tom Hoover and I would like to invite you to join me uh, from three to 5 p.m. on March 21st for a Zoom get together, session 10, the murder of Captain James A. King and the origin of the teddy bear. Um, this might be a class of interest for you Civil War buffs because it's the story of two teenage boys who fought for their respective sides during the Civil War. James King uh, grew up in the tiny village of Wittenberg, which was located a few miles north of Newton, Iowa. It was a staunch anti-abolitionist community and a and it served as an underground railroad station prior to the Civil War. Holt Collier was born into a family of house slaves on the Home Hill Plantation near Greenville, Mississippi. At the start of the war, King enlisted in the 5th Iowa Volunteer Infantry Regiment. Collier followed his masters north to Memphis, Tennessee, and was eventually allowed to serve as a combatant in the 9th Texas Cavalry. Those two units um, met numerous times on the battlefields um, in both Mississippi and Tennessee. King eventually was rose to the rank of captain and he served out the remainder of the war commanding a company of black soldiers. Collier is remembered in history as being the only slave allowed to serve as a combatant in the Confederate Army. Um, at the end of the Civil War, the two met again in, in a face-to-face -face confrontation in eight, in, on December 22nd, 1867, in a cane break in the Mississippi Delta near Greenville, Mississippi. King was murdered and Collier was charged with the murder and was eventually acquitted. King's parents, uh, upon hearing of their son's death, claimed that he had been assassinated. But this is not the end of the story. Um, Captain King would fade into history after his burial in the Wittenberg Cemetery, but Collier would not. He would go on to, to gain um, national fame actually as a, um, an accomplished hunting guide. So much so that he became Teddy Roosevelt's favorite hunting guide. And Collier was instrumental in organizing the famous Great Bear Hunt of 1902, of course, involving Teddy Roosevelt. And this is the, uh, the expedition that is credited with giving to generations of children to come one of history's most iconic toys, the teddy bear. So I hope you'll join me on March 21st to learn more about the, the fascinating story of Captain King and Holt Collier. Thank you, Tom. Good afternoon. I'm Anna McCracken, founder of the Ames Writers Collective, which is opening this spring at 409 Douglas Avenue. My class title is The Pitfalls and Pleasures of Publishing. I hope you will join me on Monday, March 28th from 3 to 5 p.m. for a panel discussion with a poet, an indie publisher, and a novelist. Our panelists are Jen Knox, whose poetry has been published in The New Yorker and the Best American Poetry series, and many of you might know her as the owner of Salt Liquors. Mikesh, Mikesh Mika 
is an associate professor of architecture at Iowa State and an editor and publisher when he's not teaching. Rachel Manns McKenney's novel, The Butterfly Effect, was published in 2022. She is an assistant director at Iowa State's Writing and Media Center. During our time together, we will discuss tips for preparing your manuscripts for publication and crafting book proposals. Additionally, our panelists will share their publishing experiences, challenges, and success stories. There will be plenty of time for questions. I promise a lively and engaging afternoon. You'll find my panel description as course number 11 in the catalog. Thank you. So I'm back again. This is class number 12. I'm reading for Carol Rudy, who couldn't be here today. So both number 12 and number 13 are her classes. So these are her words. How many Russian artists can I name? If you had asked me that question before 2005, I would have responded none. As far as I knew, Russia had produced no art at all. If I gave it some thought, I would have responded with some impression of Soviet art, propaganda posters. I might have said after a second thought. We watched curiously as a long, vacant, beautiful Spanish style church building near our neighborhood had a sign that read, the Museum of Russian Art, estimated remodeling completion date 2005. What an improvement to have a museum. A month after it opened, we visited the museum. Within 20 minutes, I was signed up as a volunteer. I was fascinated by the art that gives us a glimpse into Russian culture. This is particularly important in today's world where Russia once again looms large on the world stage. As political confrontations turn nasty, as politicians manipulate and posture and threaten, through what window might we see the people behind the people? Surprisingly, those people look and act a lot like us. They love their land, their towns, their history, their families, their art, their culture. They want stability, security, beauty, housing, food, friendship, and the artists want these things too. So using the visual vocabulary that art provides, Russian painters let us glimpse into the world behind the headlines. As I discovered, that world is rich in connection, color, humanness, joy, sorrow, pain, and grief. This presentation will stroll through some of those exhibits to give you an overview of what Russian art shows us about the human condition in a country on the other side of the globe that human condition is one that we can all describe differently. I hope you will join Carol on April 4th from 3 to 4.30, that's a Monday, for this one day course. Now I'll move to class number 13, which is Women's World, Women Artists in Russia. This one will occur on April 11th from 3 to 4.30, also on Monday. Again, these are Carol Rudy's words. For a long time, I assumed that artists were men. All of the artists that I knew from my art history classes were men. All the artists I could personally name and whose paintings I could visualize were men. Then I met the people making Russian art. To my shock, I discovered not just a couple of women artists, I discovered more women artists than I thought could possibly exist. All of those artists were major contributors to the culture of their time. Most of them are famous internationally during their lifetimes as well. Well, I had not met these artists before. Why did it take my experiences with the Russian art at the Museum of Russian Art to acquaint me with them? With a deep desire to learn more about these women artists, I began researching their lives and work. The variety of their experience and talents led me deeper and deeper into the ways in which they contributed to the visual expression of their time. Out of that research came my eagerness to share their names and work with people who like me might not know the name of a single woman artist. So this PowerPoint presentation was born. Its purpose is to give an overview of some of those women and to show their important place in Russian artistic expression. Not surprisingly, we discovered that they interact with all the important human conditions of their time. 
They experiment with different styles. They are interested in a variety of subject matter. They diversify art mediums. They challenge social norms. They paint life as they knew it. In short, they are artists. What a joy to introduce them to you through this class. My name is Jim Patton. I'm currently the chairman of the OLLI program, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about offering number 14, the homegrown businesses here in Ames. When I relocated with my retirement to Ames about eight, nine years ago, I was curious about the, the business community and the, the culture of, of the industry and other things going on in Ames. And so actually this program was scheduled to be a, a tour of these businesses two years ago. And of course, we all know what's happened over the last two years, so that got postponed. So we are going to be touring uh, four locations in Ames during our class. Uh, we're starting on the first session will be April 18th. We'll begin at the Ames Chamber Economic Development Office, and that'll actually be the only uh, so-called sit-down session that we'll have. But I thought it'd be good to give us an overview of, of what is happening in Ames, some of the economic development things that are already here, some that may be coming, uh, some of the things that contribute to the, the health of our community, both uh, culturally as, economic, as well as economically. And so that first session will be on uh, April 18th. Uh, those who enroll in the class will be sent directions to each of the locations. We'll be providing our own transportation or after you meet your class members, you may want to share. And uh, we'll be traveling to each of the locations as we, uh, as we experience them. The second location will be the Fairway Distribution Warehouse over in uh, Boone. The unique part of that tour, I think you'll find, is how they ripen bananas. And it is a unique process. But uh, many of you may not be aware that uh, uh, this is uh, one of our largest uh, grocery chains in Iowa and uh, actually started in Boone and still has their uh, corporate headquarters there. And that's on April 25th. And then the third session will be at Sigler, which is out south of town near the airport. A homegrown business that has grown into uh, uh, international uh, product design, printing, packaging, shipping, and uh, I think you'll find some interesting uh, things about uh, the Sigur Corporation. And then our fourth uh, visit will be another homegrown industry called Power Film, located out on the west side of Ames. We'll be going out there on May 9th. Again, I'll send you all of the locations, the dates, and uh, in that communication, uh, I'll include my phone number if you have any questions or have uh, questions at the last minute. Uh, before I sign off, I want to make sure that we all thank Gerilyn and Heather for all the work they do, not only leading up to this uh, event today, but in all of our programming that we do. And as chairman of your Ali uh, board, uh, I can tell you firsthand, there's a lot of work involved and they're very, very capable. So I look forward to seeing some of you. Uh, the first session being, uh, let's see, I've got to go back and look, April 18th. And uh, we we'll look forward to uh, having fun together, traveling to these various businesses. Thank you. Jeff Schroeder is unable to be here today, but he will guide, guide his class through class participation discussions on global events for classes number 15 and 16, What in the World? The class is scheduled for Tuesdays, March 22nd through April 12th, 9 to 10.30. The class will focus on international topics of interest, such as the Ukraine supply chain issues and other topics determined by unfolding events. Thank you. My name is Phyllis Schrag and <clears throat> my course is number 17, Francis Perkins, A Powerful Influence. And that meets on May 10th, and it's from 9 a.m. till 10.30. Listen to this quote. This is from Francis Perkins. The people are what matter to government and a government should aim to give all the people under its jurisdiction the best possible life, end quote. So think about your social security. Think about the work week at being 40 hours with overtime. Think about labor laws for children and adults. Think about unemployment insurance and the wonderful WPA projects that are evidence still today in many states. 
These are all ideas that were put forth by Francis Perkins, who was FDR's Secretary of Labor, and by the way, the very first woman to serve in a presidential cabinet. She was actually the woman behind the New Deal, though she didn't get any credit for it. She really didn't want credit. She just felt that she had to do the most good for the people who did not have a voice. So the ideas that she brought forth actually helped to establish what we now lovingly remember as the middle class, which is seemingly dwindling these days. She was a self-made woman and she rose up from her humble New England origins to become the leader in America for industrial safety and for workers' rights. So I will deliver this presentation in person with her hat, her pearls, well, something like them, and her dowdy black dress. And I'll explain to you why she dressed like that in the presentation. She was a powerful influence and I will be using a PowerPoint to give you pictures of the people and places that I'll speak about. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ron Palumbo, and I will be presenting class number 18, The American Experience Reflected in Idioms. This will be a three session class beginning on Tuesday, March 22nd, and continuing on March 29th and April 5th. We'll be meeting from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. So the topic, again, is American experience reflected in idioms. And an idiom, you may recall, is a widely used expression that has a particular meaning that is different than what each of the individual words means alone. That's why phrases such as pulling up stakes or acid test are puzzles to those learning the American version of English. In this three session PowerPoint class, we'll begin with the idioms rooted in the experience of European settlers in a new environment, one increasingly different from that of their homelands. We will be looking at the meanings, origins, and history of these expressions, where known, and we will take them in roughly chronological order, decade by decade. You will learn, for example, that pulling up stakes is the first idiom of purely American origin and arose from the habit of colonists building fences around their dwellings and then taking them with them when they moved on. And that acid test is an expression that dates from the California gold rush of 1849. So I hope you will join me on this tour of some completely American expressions. And thank you and I hope to see you on Tuesday, March 22nd. Hello, I'm Peter Halleck. Uh, my course is uh, number 19 and 20. Uh, 19 is the in-person version, 20 is the online version of the hybrid course. It's called Researching Ames History on Your Own, Sources and Techniques. Uh, we'll be talking about some of the history books that are available, but really history books don't do the best job of covering Ames, Iowa. Uh, even the ones about Story County almost always focus primarily on Nevada. So a lot of researching Ames history means going to newspapers, going to photo archives, property and land tax and land records, uh, and just looking in all kinds of odd places for the details that just don't uh, come across. They aren't already uh, digested for you. So I very much uh, encourage you to uh, get involved in this. It, to me, it's a fun uh, process. The process, when you're reading through uh, newspapers, and you get totally off the subject because you find other articles that are just so fascinating. Uh, it, it can be a long process because you go off on tangents, but uh, I uh, would love to share with you what the process is. And I, to be very honest, over the last year, I've learned to 
include a lot of genealogical uh, research as part of it because I've found that Ancestry and some of the other online genealogy things sometimes have some of the stuff already collected on different individuals. But uh, I encourage you, uh, the course is on Tuesday, April 12th from 11 to 12.30. Hi, Ron Palumbo again. Um, I will be offering a class, class number 21, with the title Critical Race Theory, A Brief History. It will uh, meet for a single session on Tuesday, April 19th, uh, beginning at 11 a.m. This single session PowerPoint class attempts to trace how a law school theory developed in the 1980s became a hot button political issue some 40 years later. We'll begin by considering working definitions of some of the key terms in this theory, particularly the difference between prejudice and racism. Next, we'll look at the contributions of a few of the key thinkers who helped develop this theory into an elective course in graduate schools. Then we will attempt to unravel how an abstract legal theory suddenly became synonymous with a threat to parental decision-making in educating their children. If, like me, you found yourself puzzled at suddenly hearing the phrase critical race theory all over the news, I hope you will join me on, once again, Tuesday, April 19th, for an introduction to this, the latest topic of controversy in our country's ongoing culture wars. Thank you for your time and attention. Good afternoon. I'm Justin Clausen. I'm with City of Ames. I'm presenting today for courses 22 and 23, staying involved in climate action planning on May 3rd. As an organization, the City of Ames has a long history of implementing environmentally sound choices in operations, equipment, purchases, services provided, and policies that guide organizational decision-making. Developing a climate action plan is part of the City Council's goal of valuing environmental sustainability. In this class, City Climate Action Plan leaders will provide background on the community's first climate action planning process, starting with a look back at our community's commitment to sustainability through initi initiatives such as our first in the nation resource recovery plant, glass recycling program, first in the state biodiesel initiative, SunSmart community solar farm and greenhouse gas inventory. Project leaders will then discuss selecting and moving forward with a consultant sustainability solution group establishing a greenhouse gas reduction goal for Ames, and the next steps in the climate action process. Information on how to stay up to date on the process and how to get involved will also be provided. The completed climate action plan should engage and empower residents and businesses and institutions towards ownership and responsibility in ensuring a resilient and sustainable community. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Kay Stefanik. My course is number 24, Science of Water Quality and Agricultural Systems. It's a four-week course that's going to be held on Tuesdays from April 19th through May 10th from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. The course will focus on water quality issues associated with nutrient loss from agricultural row crop acres. The first class will cover an introduction to water quality, agronomic practices, and water quality issues in Iowa. The second class will focus on the Iowa Nutrient Reduction Strategy, what it is, why it matters, and various practices that are used to reduce nitrogen and phosphorus loss from row crop acres. Week three will be out in the field. Uh, we'll be taking a tour of some nutrient reduction practices that are in place in Story County with an alternate indoor video viewing and discussion of practices for those who are either unable to attend the tour or in the event of inclement weather. The final class will be a discussion on meeting the goals of the Iowa Nutrient Reduction Strategy, current progress to, towards those goals, and future concerns. We will also show you how to uh, stay up to date on current progress using the online Iowa Nutrient Reduction Strategy tracking uh, dashboard. The course will be taught by myself and Matt Helmers. We're both with the Iowa Nutrient Research Center, along with some guest speakers that we bring in to kind of fill in some content area. Thank you.
I'm Avis Pohl, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, my, my, uh, my class is number 28, which is get your ducks in line and reduce the burden on your family. That's gonna be April 12th online from three to five. And I have to take, thank Ron for letting me know that get your ducks in line is probably an idiom. So <laughs> thanks Ron. <laughs> As a certified financial planner, I've been helping people for 20 years to communicate if someone becomes, so that if somebody becomes incapacitated, either temporarily or permanently, there's always somebody in the family that's ready to step in and help. Uh, I think over the last couple of years, we've probably seen more of this happening to families than ever before. <clears throat> But in this two hour class, um, I will help people look at everything that has to do with money from paying bills, credit cards, banking, investments, charity donations, and looking at their contracts and other documents like wills and trusts and insurance policies to make sure that everything is up to date. And then after getting all of those ducks in line, we'll discuss how to involve other people who can step into your shoes if you're temporarily or permanently incapacitated through maybe hospitalization or a stroke, or if someone feels that you might be developing dementia. And in the second hour, that's gonna be a fast first hour. In the second hour, we'll discuss how to implement family communications. And that's, um, that's getting easier. As I said, I've been doing this for 20 years with families. We used to have to meet at Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever, and it was always really difficult to break up a, a family reunion to sit and talk about the money. And if parents uh, said, we need to talk about this, their kids would say, uh oh, somebody's getting ready to die. Or if the kids want to talk about it, the parents will say, wait a minute. Do they think that I'm getting too old to handle things? So um, in this second hour, we're going to discuss how to implement family communications so that if somebody feels that they need help handling their finances or health care, um, having everybody on board will keep the burden from falling onto one person. Um, I'll guarantee that having everything up to date will give you a sense of freedom and relief in knowing that help can be immediately available if a family member needs it. And of course, we can go beyond family and use friends or anyone else who is willing to help out if someone is going to need some help, if they're um, incapacitated or feeling like they may be. So um, that will be the 28th or the 12th of, of uh, April online between three and five. Thank you. Thank you, Avis. My name is Pastor Robert Knight. I am a longtime resident of Ames, um, business owner, husband, father, uh, and so forth. Uh, my class, I get the privilege of teaching class 31 which the title is The History of the U.S. in 1619. And it is born out of the controversy regarding the 1619 project, which the Cole Hannah Jones book has started, as well as the response by Peter W. Wood. And what I intend to do is, as I'm, I'm a history buff, I, I, I have uh, a deep, deep desire to learn as much as I can. And when this controversy came up, I said, boy, wouldn't it be great to really understand both sides? And, and so as I'm preparing for it, what I want you to know is that you will learn and understand what the controversy is. You'll learn some history of slavery and its impact, both political and financial, and we'll have several, we'll have lots of time for discussion. And so it'll be a great opportunity for us just to learn together and see what all of the ruckus is or the hubbub uh, is about the 1619 Project. Please join me on this expedition. It is actually April 19th through May 10th. It'll be four sessions on Tuesday nights from 5.30 to 7. And again, that's Course 31, The History of the U.S. in 1619. I look forward to seeing you all. Thank you. 
Hi, everyone. My name is Deb Lewis. And the course uh, that I will be leading with two of my colleagues is number 32 and 33, Introduction to Iowa's Native Ferns and Grasses. This four-week hybrid course will meet on April 20th to May 11th from 9 to 10.30 a.m. I was delighted to be asked to lead this course with two of my colleagues. The ferns and grasses have been studied for many years by Iowa State researchers. The ferns and grasses are each uniquely different from other groups of plants, and they are also well represented within Iowa's native plant diversity, and some of them do well in cultivation and for naturalizing. We will begin our study with the ferns and fern allies. And we'll explore questions like, what holds this, this group together? How does their life cycle differ from that of other plant groups? In week two, we'll see which ferns can commonly be found in Iowa and which can easily be grown. For the following two weeks, we'll turn to Iowa grasses. As Iowa's second largest family of flowering plants, what has allowed the grasses to be so successful? What are their specialized flower structures that aid their reproduction and dispersal? What are the important roles of grasses in Iowa's landscapes? In week four, we'll see which grasses do well in prairie, woodland, and wetland habitats, and which ones thrive in our home plantings. And I hope that you will join us in an appreciation of these two plant groups. Thank you. Doug, would you please unmute your microphone? Hi, I'm Doug Finnamore, uh, course number 34 and 35, Structure and Function of the Brain. This is a four-week course that begins March 23rd, and it runs from 11 till 1230. Uh, <clears throat> we're gonna primarily focus on diseases of the brain. In the first lecture, uh, we'll talk about neurons, synapses, and how we use this machinery to perceive what's out in the world, to make inferences, and to decide what to do. In the second lecture, we'll talk about Alzheimer's. This is a protein misfolding disease. So we'll talk about proteins, how they fold and how they misfold. In the third lecture, we'll talk about DNA. DNA codes for all the 20,000 uh, proteins that we make. And uh, in the fourth lecture, we'll stick our toe in the water of consciousness and the difference between consciousness and the unconscious. Thank you. Hello, I'm Char Holsebus. I'm presenting with Kathy Glatz and Jean Bremer, course number 3637, Designing and Using Fidget Quilts for Patients with Alzheimer's or Those on the Autism Spectrum. It'll be offered uh, as a hybrid class Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022 from 1 to 2.30 p.m. Central Time. We discovered an the need for fidget quilts several years ago by chance through a community service project with our quilt guild. Since then, we've provided fidget quilts for patients in hospitals, care centers, and hospice facilities. As the need for fidget quilts continued to grow, we held sewing days to get more people involved. Now, after several years of making fidget quilts, we've gathered a lot of feedback from the healthcare professionals about what works for their patients. We'll share our experiences and provide information that you need uh, to construct a fidget quilt for someone you know or as a service project for your community. We'll also show you how to make some of the fidgets that go on those, those little quilts using items in, that you already may already have in your house. Uh, how to a how-to guide for making the fidget quilts will be provided 
And this presentation will be primarily on PowerPoint, but we'll also have samples in class to show you and provide inspiration. Our intent is to explain the need for fidget quilts and how you can help uh, either for someone you know or for your community. Thank you. Hi, lifelong learners. I'm Tammy Martin with the Center for Sustainable Rural Livelihoods. That's CSRL for short. We're in the College of Agriculture at Iowa State University. And I'm here to tell you about course ID number 38, Center for Sustainable Rural Livelihoods Introduction to the ISU Uganda Program. So did you know that Iowa State has a campus in rural Uganda or that we have a staff of 44 Ugandans who are doing incredible development work in the Kamuli district? If you're able to attend our 90 minute session on Wednesday, March 30th, the CSRL team is going to give you a glimpse of what it's all about. Dr. Lee Burris will talk about how his team is addressing agronomy and land use in a slightly different context than here in Iowa. Dr. Kurt Youngs will tell you how he's helping Kamuli farmers maximize live, uh, livestock productivity, including a new artificial insemination project. Dr. Gail Nanaki will fill you in on our remarkable school gardens and school lunch programs and how both ISU and Ugandan students' lives are being transformed through immersive service learning experiences. Dr. Dorothy Missindi will surely tug your heartstrings as she describes the community nutrition program, including our nutrition education centers that address the unique needs of mothers and infants. Dr. Tom Brown will describe innovations and appropriate technologies that improve the post-harvest yields of smallholder farmers. And he'll most likely tell you about the 27th borehole we just had dug to bring clean water to yet another community. Finally, I'll tell you about entrepreneurial projects that different groups in the community are engaged in to support their sustainable rural livelihoods. So I hope you can join us. Thank you. This is Sam Wormley. Uh, course number 39, Photography Tips and Techniques, will run from April 6th to May 11th on Wednesday afternoons from 1 to 2.30. This six weeks OLLI course will cover major principles of photography. In the simplest of terms, we work on capturing what you see and how you want to depict it. We will cover and concentrate on the nuts and bolts of cell phone cameras or whatever camera you're using, composition, lighting, photojournalism, post photography, processing, sharing, backup, and storage. Each week we will share photos with each other taken since the last class to support and learn from each other in the process. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mindy Williamson. I'm with the Iowa State Fair. I'm talking about course number 40. The title is Inside the Iowa State Fair. It runs for four weeks on Zoom. It is from 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Um, on Wednesday, March 23rd, I will be talking to you about things you might not know about the Iowa State Fair, uh, like when was Amelia Earhart here? Uh, why did the fair buy a baby elephant once? All those sorts of great things. On March 30th, our CEO, uh, Gary Slater, will be joining you, and he will be talking about projects we have completed and things we have coming forward in 2022. On Wednesday, April 6th, we will have a winner's secrets, uh, how to enter a contest, how to win a blue ribbon, um, and a little bit more about our ag education. On Wednesday, April 13th, you will be joined by Robin Taylor in our Blue Ribbon Foundation to talk about volunteerism, merchandise, um, corn dog kickoff and our corn dog checkoff. Uh, the courses will give you an inside scoop on the Iowa State Fair, Iowa's largest event. Um, we'll tell you a little bit about how we got from 1854 um, to 2022, um, and you will see why nothing compares to the Iowa State Fair.
Jay, are you there for class 42? Hello, I'm Jay Hinkhouse. I'm talking about class 42. The instructor is Doug Stowell. He is a Furman University OLLI instructor in Greenville, South Carolina. So this will be a Zoom class. Uh, he will guide you through a class on April 6th that meets just once, where they will look at how does the US rank globally a top 10 summary for 2022. This is the fourth annual report with a worldwide focus on how nations rank on economy, environment, education, crime and safety, healthcare, and the happiest nations. The class will discuss why the US is ranked in the position it is in 2022 and what changes may be warranted to improve our standings. We will also take a look at a national prosperity index and change readiness forecast. Doug Stowell's background is in consumer survey research and political opinion polling in the United States and in Europe. A major, a major goal is always to identify sources of information that are accurately collected and correctly reported. Every class participant will receive a full PDF copy of the entire program about a week ahead of time. And uh, again, this class meets Wednesday, April 6th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. via Zoom. This is Sam Wormley, and I'm going to be teaching class number 43, learning iPads and iPhones. We will meet from March 24th through May 12th, and this will be Thursday mornings from 9 to 1030. This eight-week OLLI course is designed to help you be safe, secure, and hassle-free in your use of Apple mobile devices. The general topics covered include navigating the iPad or the iPhone, making life easier, contacts and connections, books and media, word processing, privacy and security, backup, storage and sharing. And we're going to end the course with giving you the tools to help you keep learning. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jerry, and I am going to be offering number 44, Classics to Read or Not to Read. It will be happening on Wednesdays from 11 to 12.30 on April 20th, April 27th, May 4th, and May 11th. I will be partnering with your wonderful youth services department in the Ames Public Library, Bree Anderson, youth services manager, and youth librarians, Danielle Ziegler and Ethan Atwell to read or not to read the classics. How do we answer that question? We may not answer it, or if we do, we may each come to different answers. So let's first ask ourselves if they, the classics, stand the test of windows, mirrors, and sliding glass doors. In order to do that, we must first answer that question. What are windows, mirrors, and sliding glass doors in literature? The phrase mirrors and windows was initially introduced by Emily Style for the National Seed Project. Multicultural educational scholar, Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop furthered the concept when she coined the phrase windows, mirrors, and doors to explain how children to see themselves in books. A window is a resource that offers you a view into someone else's experience. A sliding glass door allows the reader to enter the story and become part of that world. A mirror is a story that reflects your own culture and helps you build your identity. It is critical to understand that all of us cannot truly learn about themselves until they learn about others as well. Do the classics meet this test? Do they help us see a diverse world or do they offer a biased vision. We will explore this concept and other research during the first class, and then in consecutive class times, provide book selections of current titles that provide diverse titles according to the developmental ages of infants through pre-K by Danielle Ziegler, elementary through Bree Anderson, and middle school through Ethan Atwell. We may not all come to a final answer, but you may read a your favorite classic in a different light 
and discover a current title that will replace a classic to share with others. How do I now get on? Oh, start talking. Oh. My name is Jean Meek and I'm teaching class number 45. Are you hearing me? No. no. Yes, you're on mute. No. No, nope, it's okay. It's okay. No, we hear you. Yeah, well, and they, I was still seeing the last lady. I wasn't sure what was happening there. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, yes, I'm Jean Meek. I'm teaching class number 45, The Hidden Gems of Classical Music, Part 2. I taught Part 1 back in the fall, so this is somewhat a continuation of that class. And one of the things we looked at then was composers from other countries who are probably well known in their own country, but not very well known here. And I did play one piece of music by an Australian composer. And we're going to start this class by doing some more Australian composers. Then we're going to have some music from Brazil, Venezuela, um, the Scandinavia and the Baltic area, Nor Norway, Sweden and Finland, that part of the world, and then Scotland. OK, these are composers who aren't well known. The next part of the class, we will turn that on its head, you might say, and talk about some composers who are very well known, but they have works that are hardly ever played. And that doesn't mean that they're no good. It's just that for various reasons, they're not played very often. So we're going to look at some um, little known works by well-known composers. In some cases, it's because the music has been rediscovered in recent times, but we'll go into all that in the class. We're then going to look at composers who are largely known for other types of music. And I'll give you an example, John Williams, the man who writes lots of music for films, but he also wrote some classical music. So we'll look at that and a few other people too. And then last, we're going to consider performers who also write music, but they people who are known as performers, but have occasionally composed as well. And sometimes for, for themselves to perform and sometimes for other people. And as we go along, I hope to include more women composers as I did last time and some black composers. So if you fancy another music class, come and take it. Thank oh, you. Time. Oh, I didn't, I didn't give the time. My husband's telling me I didn't give you the dates and time. So sorry. Um, it's from three week class from April the 21st, is, which is a Thursday um, through May the 5th. And it's at 11 till 1230 in the morning. Part of the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. This is Rick, Rick Cuthbert. I've got class number 46. I'm calling it Make Your Home Equity Part of Your Retirement Plan. Um, my job is to work with financial planners along with their clients to see that it works together. My tie to Ames is that my in-laws, Don and Lois Jean Hesse, uh, both came from Ames. She was a Segerstrom, he was a Hesse, and I guess grandpa was a preacher and the other grandpa was a farmer. So. So what happens is we race into retirement. We work ourselves to the point that we think we're ready. Some of us know that we're not ready. And you uh, finish out and all of a sudden you have more time and less money. So my job is to help out with that. And I work in th on three different levels. I work for those with those that have less than a half million dollars saved those who have uh, less than a million dollars saved and those who have more than a million dollars or more. Main reason uh, for this is to think about, you know, how you want to spend the rest of your life in retirement. So for me, one of my key goals is I want to get out and uh, see more of the world. So I travel as much as I can. Uh, I do know medical costs are skyrocketing. And the thing that's sort of tickling me in the back of my brain is how long can I stay at my house kicking and screaming before they can take me away? And so that's where we are. Last, last month, 
I, uh, my IRA is hurt by a close to $100,000. And now I'm beginning to think, uh oh, what else could happen to my IRAs? Because they, they've gone down more, more than that in the past. My uh, class will be on May 12th from 11 to 12.30. And I hope it's of interest to anybody who's in retirement or just getting ready for retirement. Because uh, like I said, more time, less money. Thank you. I'm Richard Shepherdson. And I'm very excited to be leading class number 47, Great Decisions in 2022. We will meet online only 1 to 2.30 on Thursdays, March 24th to May 12th. This class discussion group occurs all over the country, not by me, but all over the country with different presenters. Every year, using materials provided by the Foreign Policy Association. A little bit of information about the Foreign Policy Association. They, their sole purpose in life, going back to Woodrow Wilson's time, is to educate people on foreign policy. Because as Americans, we don't really understand in general foreign policy. And it's been a hot button of mine ever since I lived over in Europe. When, when my neighbors knew more about US foreign policy than I did. Our class will consider one topic each week for eight weeks. By the way, if you look at the cost, this is a cost, a, a real savings because not many classes run for eight weeks at the same price. <laughs> so it's a cheaper, cheaper, course to take per, per class. <laughs> Just an added benefit. <laughs> Anything I can think of here. <laughs> okay, we will, we will consider one topic each week for eight weeks. Each class will begin with a 25 minute video followed by a discussion of whatever the topic is for that week. A handbook is available from the Foreign Policy Association. It has a chapter on each of the topics. And if you, it's $35, you can buy it from the Foreign Policy Association and the, and the catalog, it gives you the address, or if you need to know it, I will provide it. I highly recommend using the catalog, using the handbook, it, but it's not required. You, if you do use it, you'll get more out of the class. I, I know that from when I've taken the class myself in the past. The eight exciting topics that we will consider are changing demographics, outer space, climate change, Russia and the US, Myanmar and ASEAN, the Quad Alliance, drug policy relative to Latin America in, and industrial policy. And we may get into Biden's agenda and fill in during some of free time. Looking, I'm looking forward to this class and I encourage everybody to attend. Thank you. Lee, you're up. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry, I, I guess I didn't hear there was a 48. Um, uh, my name is Lee Tesdell. Uh, I'll be leading the class uh, titled um, Iowa Landowners and uh, uh, Farmers Working Together for Conservation. I live on my farm just south of Ames, uh, about 15 miles. We're gonna meet uh, May 5th, Thursday afternoon from three to 4.30 online to go over uh, the topics of infield conservation practices, edge of field, and then uh, solar power. And then uh, weather permitting a week later, uh, May 12th, 
also a Thursday, 3 to 4.30, we'll have a, a uh, field uh, visit out here out to my farm, and we'll, we'll uh, look at all these practices that are in place on my farm. As you know, um, much of Iowa farmland is rented from non-operating landowners, and so this is a good opportunity for landowners um, to learn about uh, conservation options on the land that they own. Um, hope to see you there and uh, welcome all. Thank you. That sounded marvelous. I would like to thank all of our instructors and presenters. Thank you so much. And so now what we can do is we can open this up if anybody has a question. No questions. They didn't want oh, up. Carolyn, oh, okay. was it there's supposed to be a yoga class? She's not a, she's not with us today. Okay. It, will that class happen? Yes, it will. She's just Thank not you. able to be here today. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, I have a question. Yes. Um, in the uh, listing that I have the classes that I printed out from the website. Um, the uh, classes one through fourteen are listed but you get to classes 15 through 31, and those say hybrid, online, or in-person. I would assume all the ones on the first page are in fact um, online. You are correct. Well, just, just a minute, let me, let me double check that. So one through 13 are online, 14 is going to be in-person, so on each of those sites, it will tell you first the title, it'll tell you when it is, how many weeks, the time, the cost, and then right underneath that, it will tell you if it's off-site, online, with Zoom, in-person, or if it's a hybrid. Okay, so generally, except for that one, if it doesn't say, if it doesn't say hybrid, uh, it is going to be an online class. Well, some of those classes might be just strictly in-person, though. Mm -hmm. We do have. How would I know? People. Well, because it will say that run it underneath where it talks about the cost of the class. So, for example, let me find one here real quick. We've got a lot of different options, and we we apologize for the different different things that are going on. But so, for example, we have some classes that are just in person, and that's like class number seventeen, which is Francis Perkin. That's only going to be in the building. Uh, 18, the American experience reflected in idioms. If you have a copy of the catalog, um, if you go back to page 56, that will list all of the classes by how they're delivered. And okay. I think we also have that in the last newsletter. Um, so we have just in-person classes. We have online with just Zoom. And then we have what we call the hybrid. So we'll have some people will be in the building and then also with the hybrid, some people will be online. And then as Jim Patton was talking about, he is, his class will be totally offsite. Each day they will go to a different business. Yeah. So, so if you have a question about one of the classes you wanna take, just give Heather or I a call and we can make sure that, that you've um, got that. Yeah, I'll see if I can find it in the, in the catalog first. Thank you. Okay. And if you have any questions, just send it to us. We, we can send it to you really quickly. Right. Geraldine, okay. Geraldine, it's Anna. Yeah. So if you sign up for one that's hybrid in person plus hybrid online, mm -hmm. if you're going to attend the in person, but let's say you can't come one day, do you get the link to the hybrid online? Yes, we can do that. Thank you. Yes. The only thing that you can't change is if we're doing a hybrid and you register for in person, um, we can get you the link if you want to do it from home that day. If you register for a hybrid and you do it for the online version, you can't just come into the building because we only have X number of seats. Um, but we are going to be visiting with all of those um, presenters, and I'm guessing that probably most of them will be recorded. And so even if you are supposed to be in person and you can't make the in person and you don't do it online, you'll still be able to get the recording to the class. Okay, another question. Yes. 
I, uh, what page did you say it starts telling you how the, how it is to be presented online oh. only or whatever? Sure, that is on page 56. 56. Yep. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. We put it that way also so people could see it all in one spot. Um, we know that this is probably going to be a little confusing. Heather and I have went back and forth on a variety of ways to try to get this information to folks so it's not so confusing. Uh, we we um, hope for your patience in doing this and we will be patient with you if for some reason you register for the wrong one, we will, um, we will get those switched around. But, and this is gonna be different having hybrid and some people in the building and some people online. So we just ask for patience for everybody, you know, patience for us, patience for the instructors, patience for your fellow class members. So it's another time of learning for all of us. Mm -hmm. Geraldine, uh, could I speak with Anna? I have uh, a Anna? question for Anna. Anna? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Anna, um, do you, will you cover anything about illustrating or is it all going to be about writing, which is similar? Yeah. You mean um, submitting illustrations for publication? Yeah, possibly. Mm -hmm. So I don't, you know, I haven't worked with, because we planned this so far out in advance. Okay. But the okay. one person that might be able to answer that is um, Mikesh, the publisher, who is also the editor. So um, okay. he, he might be able to answer questions on that. Whereas um, Jen, she's a poet and mm -hmm. Rachel, you know, she's a novelist. So, so Mikesh right. might be able to point you in directions for that if you attend. Okay. But, you and know, some of the, some of the same things might pertain, you know, so I'll make a note of that. You know, if I see that you've signed up, I will um, make a note and, and have, you know, we can have Mikesh address that. I, I can pre-warn him about illustrated okay. questions. And, and you're on Zoom too, aren't you? Yeah, I didn't know I had the in-person opportunity. My writers have been begging me to go back in person, but um, we're on Zoom. Right, okay, thank you. You're welcome, Joe. Anyone else? Hi, I have a question. Um, maybe I missed this, but I can't get to the catalog online. It says it, it can't be shown or something. Am I doing something wrong? No, it's not you, Margaret. It's not you. <laughs> there was a, an issue with all of that. So Margaret, give me your last name and I will make sure I'm gonna send you a direct um, by, by email, a PDF. Okay, thank you. Elbert, E-L-B-E-R-T. Okay, all right. Margaret, I will get something to you. How okay, can, thank you so much. You're welcome. How can, how can we get a copy of the catalog? You mean like a paper copy? Uh-huh. Okay. Usually there are some in the mail room at Northcrest, but I haven't seen any. Oh, well, let's see. Some. I know I put some aside for, for Northcrest. Um, well, maybe they will maybe they will show up. So you're at Northcrest? Uh -huh. Yes. <clears throat> um Talk to Diana Shonrock. Okay. She's got some. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Sherilyn, I learned this trick while I was in my MFA program. I just uploaded the PDF into the chat. Mm -hmm. So if people are, you know, know how to um, double click on it, they can grab it and save it to their desktop. Okay. So yeah, if you go to your chat, if you feel comfortable doing that, Anna has... Uh, put the chat in there and you can download that directly to your computer. Uh, so if you open up the chat, if you don't feel comfortable with that, I can send you a direct email. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome. I have everything highlighted already. I'm going to be ready to go. <laughs> Carolyn? Yes. Um, is the uh, session 41 going to um, be happening or not? On, on NAMI, National Alliance on Mental yes, Illness? Yes, it is. It's just that the okay. presenter could not be here today. Okay, I missed that probably on that yeah. Okay, and, super. And we just didn't um, have anything to read for that one. So. Okay, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. 
Now that one is strictly in person. So that won't work for you in California. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I, no, it won't work for you. Sorry. <laughs> and I want to thank you, Anna. I want to thank you for, I learned something new under the sun. I didn't know you could put a PDF in chat. Thank you. No, I learned that about a couple months ago. Yeah. Super. I do that a lot with some instructors when they want to send me large PDFs or large files. We can do it through a chat session like that. It's super nice. Mm -hmm. Do we have to open it while it's in chat or can we move it to our desktop? I think you could just download it and it will download to your download file folder. Mm -hmm. so or if you double click on it, then you, yep. sometimes it's funky, double click on it and then it'll yeah. open and save it. I was just trying to move it to my desktop, but I couldn't move it. Okay. But I can open it. Okay. Then save it after you open it. Yeah. Oh, yay. <laughs> so Joe, did it work for you? It did. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Any other burning questions? If you think of something later, feel free to contact me or Heather and we will answer your questions to the best of our ability. So, I hope everybody well, for tomorrow morning at 30, please, right? Let me ask one more thing. Sure. Uh, just a suggestion. And by the way, Gerald, you're doing a wonderful job with all this. I've been the first two quarters and this one, they're terrific. And um, it would be obviously helpful if on these uh, courses by day, because that's what I'm the primary thing I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. I refer to the individual listings uh, when I want to find out what, what about the class. If all of these always said where they're, how they're going to be presented, you did that with some with hybrid, I personally or online. But it's a good place to have it here. So I can just look at this and know right away. Now I've got to go back and cross reference. Okay. That's, that's a very good point. Thank you. Like I said, Heather and I went, I don't know how many times we changed this. Uh, Heather, it wasn't like six, seven times. We, we did multiple ways. Um, and so this, this year is just really a test on that. And so we would appreciate all your feedback and how we can make the catalog easier uh, moving forward. Thank you. You can pretty much, um, there is somewhat of a, a theme. So Mondays and Thursday classes are going to be online usually in any class that's gonna be in person or a hybrid would be on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Now there are some exceptions. Uh, for example, we do have some online classes on Wednesdays for Sam's photography class and there's another one just because of a scheduling issue. And I think the maybe it was the Iowa State Fair is also possibly on a Wednesday. So we tried to highlight things in the descriptions as best we could. So does everybody have their list ready to, to register tomorrow? Yep. All right, good. When, now, when people left. sign up, they, they should probably need to be very careful that they sign up for the right class class and not, you know, there's two numbers for the hybrid mm -hmm. classes. Right. And if it's a hybrid class, the second number will always be the online version. But just be careful. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's why <laughs> if you're looking at the catalog, you will notice above every single one of those, we, you know, we put information on there saying there's two numbers here so please watch those carefully so yeah um, like I mentioned earlier uh, last I knew the website's a little slow right now and it may be slow tomorrow so if you are registering tomorrow and it's slow and it doesn't go through it's not you just be patient or if you get a message that says sorry uh, this took too long close it and try it again so um, I will try to keep on that and see what else. Of course, Heather and I have absolutely no control over that. Wish we did, but we don't. Um, so I guess just be when does registration start? Registration starts at 8.30 tomorrow morning. Okay. 
That way we as staff can get into the building and be ready before you all get on and hit it hard, we hope. That's what we're looking for. Catherine, I saw in the chat you asked to have the catalog emailed to you. Uh, you should be seeing that shortly from me. So, and who was that you? Darlin, Mark, yes. and Catherine. Okay, thanks. I was just curious, um, Margaret, before uh, I think mentioned that uh, she wasn't able to get into the actual. Um, catalog right. and she clicked on it mm -hmm. and um i had never had that happen before i just wondered i thought it was maybe my computer no and it's not we you know because we have done it like that many times yeah we didn't personally send those messages out um those were sent out through the alumni association uh, mail service and i'm not sure what happened but for some reason that link did not work and so I heard from a lot of people that it didn't work. And unfortunately, then Heather and I were both out of the office the next day, and it was a bit of a headache. So I really apologize about that. But, oh, no, I, I really thought it was my computer. <laughs> no, and see, and that's the thing is I don't want you all to think that it's your fault. It's not. It was not your fault. So, so Mary Lou, do you still need to get the catalog? No, I did. Uh, Dip was kind enough to help me out with that. And I was really uh, thankful. And I just, like I said, I just wanted to make sure yeah. it was. If all uh, else fails, I, you know, if all else fails, don't work on that link. Instead, go to the Ali website and then click on directly on the website. That would be my suggestion. If a link doesn't work in an email, go right to the Ali website and the link should work better from there, just in case. Okay. She just Fair wanted enough. to make sure that I knew that it wasn't her fault. <laughs> it was not. Carolyn, this is Leroy. Yeah. Hi, Leroy. Um, can you go over for us the lectures? There's always four good lectures yes. that we get every semester. There's four of them, and I see they are going to be hybrid. So maybe you want to explain how we'll get the link to sign up well, to be in person or go hybrid. We're, you do not have to register at this point for members only lectures um, because they are going to be a hybrid. If everything still continues health wise, um, they will be in the building, but we're going to have to limit the number of the people in the building. At this point in time, we have not decided how that's going to work. Um, but so there are four lectures. They are on April the 19th. April 26th, um, May 3rd, and May the 10th. And those descriptions start on page 49 in the catalog. And then those of you who are taking classes, you will always get emails from me every Friday, the, like even the Friday before classes start. Every Friday, all members, all the members get an email from me telling you what's happening the next week. Are there going to be any lectures, um, Ollie lectures, how those will work if there's a link? Um, also, I'll tell you about um, retiree programs that you're welcome to join. So that's your place to find those links. And I know I'm not answering your question directly, Leroy, but to be honest, we haven't decided exactly how we're going to do that for the in-person yet. Yeah, well, I was, I was wondering, you clarified it with your Friday communication. That's probably the most practical to, yeah. to know the status of our COVID situation at the time. And I do know, though, that all presenters would like to be in person, if at all possible. So Doug has visited with each of them, and that's their method. Uh, they prefer to be in person. Well, I mean, that's good. I mean, we could still have it, presenters in the ballroom, but then people log on through Zoom and not have person in attendance. So... Yeah, but, but we're happy to have the lectures, and Doug does a good job at organizing and recruiting, so it's an important part of our membership benefit. I agree. I agree 100%. Any other final questions? Um, do we have a way to monitor the uh, who's registering for our session? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part. 
do we have a way of monitoring uh, the registration for our session? How many people have signed up? What we will do is probably the week before, Heather or I will send you an email and let you know how many people are in your class. Okay. And then if you would like, we can share the first and last names of the class members. Okay. All right. We'll share other things. So. Hey, Geraldine, I got a question. Yes. Um, the uh, classes that were recorded in the fall and in the winter and now in the spring, are those links always going to be available to we can watch those anytime we want to in the future? Well, I can tell you that I have never taken any of those links down yet. Okay. Those links are still out in the class sidebox. And so for those of you who are not aware, every class gets a class sidebox, which is the university's version of, of box. So every class will have its own box and only people in that class will be able to get into the box. That's a good place for instructors to put extra materials. And that's where if your class is recorded, that's where the recordings will go. And then also a lot of times the instructors will share their PowerPoints with us and we will put those in there also. So very good question. Um, everything's still there for right now. Yeah. Hopefully that will continue to be there. Well, Probably. <laughs> I never heard of anything. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anything else? Last call. Thank you, everyone. I'm looking forward to seeing your names come across my email that you're going to register for class. Thank you, presenters, for spending some time with us today and letting folks know about the opportunity you have to share with them and I think spring's going to be a great session and I'm really looking forward to it. So Heather and I get to go to all the classes. So, you know, oh, I see Peter. All right, Peter, did you have a question or are you just waving goodbye? All right. All right. Bye everybody. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah.